Today I'm going to be answering one of your art questions about how to get your line drawing right on acrylic paintings. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Sky writes, Hi Lisa, I've worked in watercolors for a long time and I want to get started with acrylics, but I do not know where to start. I've always started with the super accurate sketch, but as soon as I start painting, I go back to my watercolor techniques, but I feel that I ruin all my sketches by painting over them. I watch a lot of your videos and try to follow your techniques, but I feel that I have something lacking. You're going to approach your line drawing in acrylics very differently than how you would with watercolors. Watercolors are generally pretty translucent, so you're going to be able to see your lines through that. The other thing is that because of the way that acrylic dries quickly, you're not going to get a smooth background if you're trying to paint out around your subject if you had pre-drawn that on the canvas. So my favorite method to avoid having these problems is to use tracing and transfer paper with acrylics. Now first, don't think that means you have to trace. Tracing and transfer paper works great even if you freehand on your own. You can freehand your drawing out onto another piece of paper and then trace it onto the tracing paper, then use the tracing and transfer paper to get it onto the canvas. Or you can just trace your subject if that's how you prefer to paint. Either way is fine. Now the reason that I say draw it on another piece of paper first versus just drawing it straight onto the tracing paper, if you're going to be doing a lot of erasing and sketching and moving stuff around, tracing paper is really thin, it's going to bend and wrinkle or tear on you. So if you just use a regular large sheet of paper, you could even use butcher paper. You don't need an expensive good paper to do this. Just get your initial drawing down and then you can trace that so your tracing paper doesn't get damaged during the erasing and sketching process. The next reason that I really like using tracing and transfer paper is that it helps keep your canvas clean. It keeps your work very clean. You're not going to have lines where you've erased, redrawn, erased, redrawn. You avoid any problems like that. Now if you are going to draw directly on the canvas, and sometimes I do this myself, use a white charcoal pencil. I do not use a regular graphite pencil. Those graphite marks, they just are too hard to get rid of. They're not attractive. I don't recommend a graphite pencil for the initial or even drawing over a background. Let's say you have your background painted out and you want to draw something over it. I do not recommend using a regular graphite pencil. Go with that white charcoal. It is much better. If you're going to use graphite, go with water soluble graphite so that those lines again will be worked out. The next reason that I really like using tracing and transfer paper to get my drawing onto the canvas, I'm able to very easily move it around. So with this one, I had previously drawn everything out for my cheetah on this tracing paper. When I drew, painted my background, let's say I would painted a scene that had a whole landscape and I had certain trees in different locations and I needed to have my subject positioned in a very specific location. If I freehand that onto the canvas on its own, there's a very good chance I'm going to end up too big, too small, too far to the left, too far to the right. I can make all of those mistakes or get that figured out on the tracing paper and then I can reposition it to decide, okay, do I want my subject higher? Do I want it lower? I can position that just exactly right without messing up my pre the previous background portion of the painting. And that brings me on to the next reason that I use this method. With acrylic painting, it dries really, really quickly. In this case, if I want a nice smooth background, or let's say I did something, it could be a landscape, it could be anything that I did in the background, fading from one color to the next. If I want it to be really smooth, I can't paint around the subject and still have smooth blending, a smooth finish. It dries too quickly. It's Even if I'm using the airbrush, it's going to be a horrible mess. So whereas with oils, I may draw out the cheetah and then paint around it, it dries very slow. With acrylics, I absolutely do not do that. I paint my entire background and layer on top of that. And that's where the tracing paper ends up being really handy. So we'll use a marine painting, for example. I painted a whole underwater scene. I painted my whole background solid blue. Then my next layer is going to be the corals, whatever is farthest in the back, and then I work my way forward. Now, as I get forward enough and I want to start painting in fish or dolphins or whatever else, what I will do is take my tracing and transfer paper method. I'll have pre-drawn out whatever fish that I want, I can then use the tracing paper and move it around on that canvas so that I can then determine where it will look best. Okay, is it better two inches to the right, two inches to the left? I can get it positioned just right. I will then take my tracing and transfer paper. I will draw out, use that to draw out the outline of the fish. And if I was painting a fish that was going to be red or orange, I can't just paint orange paint over a blue background. It's not going to show up well enough. The orange and reds are too translucent. So what I'll do is fill in the outside outline that I had done with white let it dry, and now I can paint my fish. I can use the transfer paper again to draw out any details, the fins, whatever I need, but I can layer like that, each layer, get a base of red, then use my tracing and transfer paper if I want to again to get all of the details, where the eye goes, everything exactly right. So I'm only having to actually draw it out once. And again, this doesn't mean you have to trace things. You can draw it out once on another piece of paper and then trace that onto your tra tracing paper. 
But by doing this, every time I have to put a new layer on the fish, I don't have to redraw out or refigure out where those fins go. I drew it once. I'm just going to tracing, use the tracing and transfer method to get it reapplied each additional time. And then in a case like this, let's say I had painted out most of the cheetah. I had everything drawn out. I started painting and I realized I think the eye is too small. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it's too small. I can take my tracing and hold it up to it and say, okay, am I too small or is that an illusion? Because what happens sometimes when you're painting, when, you sh when you're in the process of shading things, sometimes one area like the eye may look way too big or way too small, when in fact it's just because of how the shading is around it. I don't want to change the size of the eye in that case just because the highlights aren't quite done yet and that's causing an illusion of something being too big or too small. So here, if I have any doubts as to whether or not I'm getting my drawing or keeping it very accurate, I can take that initial drawing that I had done and compare it. I can move that around as needed and still see through the paper to see my lines to see if everything is matching up where it's supposed to. But it's an easy way to check your work. If you know you started with a very accurate initial drawing, by checking your work this way, it's going to help you to stay accurate as you're working. And again, because this happens really often, you'll have an illusion where something is shaded very dark, it's not finished, but it's making, it's throwing off something else. And so I've seen where students will think, okay, well now the eye looks too small, so I need to make it bigger. Well, once they finish shading that area that they were working on, the eye now is too big. So by using this, having this kind of back backup map that you can stick over your artwork to double check yourself with your initial drawing, it'll help you to be that much more accurate. And it keeps your work so clean because you're not constantly reworking and redrawing stuff. You've got your map right there. You can see exactly how big, how small, that you've got everything exactly how you initially drew it out. I have a frequently asked questions page over at my website. If you cannot find the answer to your question, there is a section where you can submit a question to be featured in one of these videos. I'll have a card pop up here so you can check that out. Hey, have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there that you can click. It'll help you to keep up to date with all five of my newer videos every single week. There's also a little bell icon you can click on that will send you a notification every time I have a new video go up. I'll see you guys in a couple of days.